Hey there, and welcome to the Textile Quest, a series by Text Connect, an exclusive podcast series which will take you through the latest textile innovations, news, snippets, expert opinions, and the scenario of the textile and the fashion industry. I am Abhimanyu, and we'll meet twice a month discussing stuff from the textile and the fashion domain. Don't worry if you have missed out on a textile magazine or article in the past month, because I'll get you covered with this Textile Quest podcast. The credit to the content and articles go to Fiber to Fashion, Textile Excellence, and the Indian Textile Journal. Okay, so there is a highlight which says the export target of a three trillion US dollars can be achieved by instilling unity in Tirupur's competition model. This is taken from Raja N. Shanmugam. Mr. Raja is the president of Tirupur Exporters Association in which he said the Indian total exports in the last financial year stood at around 480 US billion dollars. Of this, Tirupur accounted for a share of 0.8%. So that comes at around 4.56 billion US dollars worth of exports only from Tirupur. And this is only from just one product. Now, according to him, what makes this even more interesting is that this was achieved mainly through exports by the MSME sector, that is the micro, small and medium enterprises. Mr. Raja says that we are all competitors here, but we have always come together for the betterment of the industry, for creating and developing the infrastructure of this district. He also says that they are the pioneers in adopting zero liquid discharge. In Tirupur, today not a single drop of water is allowed to leave the factory untreated. The resultant factor is that the water con- conservation has become the main objective of the Tirupur cluster. According to Mr. Shanmugam, the process houses today in Tirupur are used to recycling water to the fullest, reducing the load on ETPs and the environment. Green energy is another focus area for this cluster. Now, according to him, this year especially, cotton prices have been a disturbing factor, and we are all aware of it. In fact, all raw material input costs have gone up by 100%. It is an unprecedented situation for the industry. We have been urging the government to step in to ensure the industry's sustainability, as this industry is predominantly in the MSME sector. In Tirupur alone, 95% of the units are MSMEs, employing around 6 lakh workers, and another 2 to 3 lakh workers being employed indirectly. Now, one solution to this is that the Cotton Corporation of India, CCI, should start to build cotton stocks. At any given time, the agency should have sizable cotton stocks to create that much needed buffer from the price fluctuations. Now, when asked about whether India will be a textile and apparel sourcing destination for the world, he says that it is quite possible. But... A thing that is holding us back is the disconnect between the industry and the decision makers, which has hampered quick and effective action. According to him, the suggestion here is the existing structure of the export promotion councils should be disbanded. It has proved ineffective and nothing more than a lobbying platform, where just a few have a voice and instead of entire industry. Lobbying has always been a British legacy in a system which needs to be corrected. Instead, there need to be product boards in the happening areas. For instance, the knitwear board in Tirupur, home textiles board in Karur, woven fabrics board in Ichil Karanji or Bilwara, carpet board in Badohi or Kashmir, with industry representation across the country. Such boards will work towards boosting the sector and be able to give a true representation of the industry, allow for a quick policy and other interventions when needed. He stressed on this point again that our textile industry is largely represented by MSMEs. It is a labor-intensive industry and that is very true. We all are aware that the textile industry is the second largest employer after agriculture. This, if implemented, will revamp and make the Indian textile industry truly Atmanirbhar and a world force. So this was all about his interview and his views. Now, there was this article that said the government of India wants to create 75 textile hubs like Tirupur, which will support the textile product exports, 
ensure inclusion of the sustainable technology, generate enough huge opportunities for employment. And this was quoted by the Union Minister of Textiles and Commerce and Industry of Consumer Affairs, Mr. Shri Piyush Goel. Now moving down to another article that caught my eye was the Indian textile and apparel exports were the highest ever at $44.4 billion in the financial year 2022. India scaled its highest ever exports tally at a $44.4 billion in textiles and apparel, including handicrafts. Now this indicated a substantial increase of around 40% and 26% comparing to the year 2021 and 2020 respectively. United States was the top export destination accounting for the 27% share. And this was followed by the European Union that accounted for 18%, then Bangladesh and then the UAE. In terms of product categories, the export of cotton textiles was around $17.2 billion, while that of ready-made garments was $16 billion. Man-made textile was followed by this at $6.3 billion US dollars and the handicrafts stood at $2.1 billion. These are some phenomenal numbers and a hope to the brighter side as well. Now coming down to Istanbul, an, an article which said the ITM 2022 held at Istanbul has broken all the records in the terms of sales. This ITM hosted in Istanbul for five days recorded some exceptional business volume of over 1.5 billion euros. The exhibition had around 1200 exhibiting companies and representatives from over 65 countries. The footfall stood at around 64,000, which has now made Turkey as a supply center for the European, Middle Eastern and the African countries, especially with the distribution of supply chain in Far East countries, including China. Talking about some brands, American apparel and footwear brand Nike has decided to permanently exit the Russian Just Do market. The company has suspended the operations of its e-commerce website as well as the mobile application in Russia and has announced that it will not open its stores again. These are some consequences uh, which Russia has to bear in the textile and the fashion domain following its invasion of Ukraine. Likewise, British multinational retailer Marks & Spencer has also made the decision to fully exit its Russian franchisee after operating in the country for around 17 years. As a result, the company has recognized a charge of 31 million euros, representing its full exit costs from Russia. Another article which said Reliance Retail Limited has signed a long-term franchisee agreement with American apparel major Gap Incorporated. The partnership will mark Gap's return to India with its casual wear apparel brand. In, in the year 2020, Gap terminated its franchisee agreements with Irwin Lifestyle Brands and shuttered its stores and liquidated its online inventory. According to the sources, the retailer could open new stores before the festive season across the various cities and could soon be available on agio.com, that is, Reliance Retail's e-commerce platform. Through the long-term franchisee agreement, Reliance Retail has become the official retailer for Gap across all channels in India. Now let us talk something about the articles which highlighted some very important innovations in the textile industry. And one of this was the automatic warehousing solutions, which is provided by UV Hightech. UV Hightech, this company, has its corporate office in Mumbai and was established in the year 2000 with an intention to serve the textile industry on an all India basis with creative solutions for improving the productivity, quality and the energy conservation. It was soon realized that the industry had a very poor infrastructure for storage and supply chain and thus it was seeking to find the right solution. UV Hightech soon appreciated these requirements and offered to textile industry the best of the most efficient warehousing solutions in partnership with Automa Italy and the following features were included. That was high throughput, traceability of goods produced and the raw material, dense storage, lowest footprint, low operation cost by employing less manpower and low cost warehouse. Another innovation are, is from the researchers from the US based North Carolina University that is NCSU. They have found that they could filter carbon dioxide 
from air and gas mixtures at a promising rate using proposed new textile based filter. Now this development of a possible new carbon capture technology could reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And while the filter would need to be scaled up in the size significantly, rather researchers think that their design would make that step easier compared with the other proposed solutions. This is an excellent way of reducing the carbon footprint and the pollution. Now coming to Singapore, Nanyang Technical University NTU has developed a stretchable and proof fabric that turns energy generated from the body movements into the electrical energy. Now this is a crucial component in the fabric that is a polymer that when pressed or squeezed converts mechanical stress into electrical energy. Washing, folding and crumbling does not degrade its performance. This fabric turns human motion into electricity. In a proof of concept experiment reported in the scientific journal Advanced Materials in the month of April, the NTU Singapore team showed that the tapping on a 3 by 4 cm piece of new fabric generated enough electrical energy to light up 100 LEDs. Now this will prove to be a revolutionary research by the Singapore team. Talking about virtual fashion. Now the idea of metaverse is pushing virtual fashion market. The brands are embracing virtual fashion and capitalizing on it. This is a word that has been around for quite a some time now and people are still getting used to it. We know that gamers have been buying accessories, clothing and skins for their digital avatars. But now the trend has caught up with the fashion brands too. In fact, Ralph Lauren attributed its strong third quarter earnings to these virtual investments and the younger generation shoppers it has attracted. Our global players like Nike, Adidas and Vans are also on the same path. As the customers can dress up their avatars for virtual worlds in the metaverse like Horizon Worlds and Decentraland, fashion industry views it as its next revolutionary innovation. Now since virtual fashion is no more confined to avatars, one can now wear virtual garments on Snapchat and Zoom meetings or pose with them for photos and social media feeds. This means one can show up to work meeting in a complete boardroom attire while in real life one is all casually dressed. Or post a picture on Instagram of a luxury jacket that was never touched in the real life. Virtual fashion is being sold in a variety of ways from gaming platforms and digital photos to videos that are augmented reality and even NFTs. Virtual fashion world does not require fibers or factories yet can bring designs to life through computer programs and 3D animations, adding to fashion sustainability. Morgan Stanley estimates that the virtual fashion market at $55 billion by the year 2030. So this is an area that the textile industry needs to explore more and join hands with the fashion industry and keep themselves updated to the future. Now a topic of reusing fabric waste. The article which stated that numerous textile and apparel manufacturers, researchers and even fashion brands are working to develop innovative methods to reduce textile waste, which is beneficial to planet Earth, of course. For instance, take the case of Levi's, the world's leading denim manufacturer. In the year 2016, it started developing the first jeans using 100% recycled cotton from the dissolved old t-shirts. Now, encouraged by the continuous improvement in the recycling process over the subsequent years, the denim leader is now targeting all its products to be made from 100% recycled cotton by the year 2025. In order to achieve the set target, the American manufacturer has introduced dedicated textile recycling programs in US. Canada, Japan, UK and Germany. Similarly, there's a Swedish fashion giant H&M has also chosen to use only recycled and sustainable materials in all of the products by 2030. Others like Mango and Zara are also following the suit. The British luxury fashion brand Stella McCartney, which never used leather or fur, switched to organic fabrics, low impact dyes and regenerated cashmere from off-cuts to produce luxury clothes. 
Now, sustainability is not only in the textile part, but it also comes in a very essential part that is sustainable packaging. Packaging is usually considered a trivial matter when it comes to sustainable fashion. However, when a fashion item reaches the consumer, the packaging material mostly ends up as a disposal with no recycling option. This is why fashion designers, brands and companies are now switching to upgrade to bio-packaging. India's domestic designer brand Doodlage converts its leftover materials into smaller products like accessories as well as paper to make its packaging completely plastic-free. At global stage, luxury fashion brands, PVH has committed to achieve packaging that is 100% made up of sustainable and ethically sourced material by 2025 prior to becoming a zero-waste company by 2030. The other waste reduction strategy comes in the form of sharp polybag systems which offer an on-demand, low-waste shipping solutions. The polybags can be custom printed to enhance customer experience and with the how to recycle label so that customers know how to recycle the bags at the store drop off. So this was all the major update from the industry happened in the past month collected from various sources and magazines. Stay tuned as I'll come up in the end of the month again bringing you the updates from the industry, the snippets and also some amazing innovations to keep you updated with what's going on in our textile domain. Keep listening to this podcast on Spotify and YouTube. Share it with your friends and the industry people. See you next time.